shark has pretty teeth there, and he shows pearly white, just a Sort of like them French fried potatoes. Mm -hmm. I like mine with a little mustard on them. <laughs> <laughs> I read a sling bait again last night on DVD. Tell you what, that Billy Bob Thornton is a real deal, ain't he? Huh? Oh, yeah. Just relax, David. It'll be all right. Uh, hey, you didn't give us any damn mess. No, I didn't. Why are we meet at Daddy's anyway? Less conspicuous. David, come on, let's go. We got to go now. Come on. What exactly does this fella do again? He's a financial consultant. Well, has he got references or something? Ain't that kind of business, David. Well, how do you hear about him then? You know Johnny Vance, don't you? Yeah, I know Johnny. Lost his arm in a hay baler accident. Saved his farm, though. Insurance money. Now, from what I understand, that's only one option. In the early 1900s, with old-timey methods, farmers was losing 30% of their crops to insects and disease. Now, with your modern herbicides, pesticides, insecticides, what have you, they're losing 30%. Just facts and figures. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm Tommy O'Dell, and, uh, and this here's my brother, David. I'll know all about him soon enough. But right now, I just got one question. What's that? Y'all got some cold beer? You ain't got any PBR? No, sure don't. You can tell a lot about a man by the kind of beer he drinks. Bring me all your papers. Papers? Deeds, titles, loans, insurance, receipts, everything. Another one of these imports, if that's all you got.
I've got a calculator if you need it. Man who won't add his own numbers ain't much of a man in my book. Who does your book, son? My wife does. You say your marriage on a solid foundation? Yeah. Why? That's the thing about numbers. They either add up or they don't. I'll take a shot of bourbon if you got it. You going to work today? Get done with this meeting in time, I am. Boy, that son of a gun can drink some beer. Seems to hurt his figure, not no, does it? You sure ask a lot of personal questions. Oh, he's an accountant, David. I don't know, maybe. Maybe this isn't such a good idea after all. Why, a new bank manager start returning your phone calls? The damn farm corporation. It's squeezing us all out. Carpetbaggers. Do what? Corporations. Modern day carpetbaggers, that's what this fella said. Said they sweeping over the country like a swarm of locusts. And I tell you what, David, I think this old boy's gonna help us out. Besides, it probably ain't as bad as you think anyway. You better have your shot of Sarah Bourbon, David. Why's that? It don't look good. It's doable, but it ain't gonna be pretty. Y'all 277,452 dollars rounded off to the nearest zero. You're going to default on your second mortgage on the second 15th. Second mortgage? On what? On the farm. You are kidding me, right? Listen, you can't give chickens and hogs away right now, Tommy. I told you to diversify, didn't I? I told you to diversify. I ain't raising no damn llama. No, you're going to sit here in this house full of ghosts reading them diaries of dead Odell's dreaming about the good old days. Look, Daddy, give me the farm, not you. Yeah, yeah, and that old fool was as stupid as you are, too, wasn't he? What'd you say? You heard me. Listen, you better shut up about Daddy or I'll... A what? What are you gonna do? Nice family. What? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Your wife got a beauty mark on her left titty. Looks like a second nipple. I mean, in the dim light. How'd you know that? For real, David? She know I'm here? No. No, she don't. Good. Now, next order of business. Whoa. I want to know how you know my wife's got a beauty mark on her left titty. Medical records. All in knowing the codes. Breast exam in November of last year with detailed descriptions, that coupled with repeated purchases of porcelain and fading cream. Just a matter of putting two and two together. Damn, he's good, ain't he? Have I got your attention now, David? Yeah. I guess you do. Good. You got some more cold beer? No, you drank them all. Say again? I'm fresh out. You want me to go get some? Get a case of PBR. Some pickled eggs while you're at it. Let's go take a look at your inventory, David. And bring that bottle of bourbon. Fire. Once we get started, this old wood ought to catch pretty good. That's 25,000 down. Wait. I can't burn down the old home place for no $25,000. Too late to add any more insurance to it. No, I mean, I was planning on fixing it up one day. With what? Look, my great great granddaddy built this place. Five generations of Odell's have lived and died here. My own daddy'd roll over in his Your grave. Your own daddy's gonna roll over in his grave when some rich Yankee comes in there, paints a fuchsia, and turns it to a bed and breakfast. I've seen it happen. I'm just giving you options, David. Final decision be yours. 
But you gotta get a hold of yourself, son. Take your shot off that there bourbon. Fire a leap off old home place, onto your dry grass, run up your tractor, which will be parked next to your hog pen with a full tank of diesel. It'll explode and torch your hogs. Torch my hogs? Most of which already been sold and removed. We'll supply the charred bones and hide no extra feet. Same thing here. After the chickens are removed, we'll throw in the burnt feathers and chicken heads gratis. Burn down the house. This truck train ain't worth much itself, so we'll have to fudge on the inventory. Where's your wife at, anyway? At her mama. Every other weekend, your boys, too? Yeah. How do you know that? You can tell a lot about a person's comings and goings. You know how to interpret the numbers. What numbers? Stay with me now, David. This is where it gets tricky. I couldn't do that to old Lucky. We're not dealing with idiots here, David. Time into the fire, your financial straits, they gonna ask questions. If old Lucky here goes up in flames too, your faithful companion for what? Seven years. Well, they'll figure nobody's that cold blooded. Besides, your natural bereavement and overwhelming guilt for causing his death could be the clincher. Could be. Well, there's always 4.5% margin of error, plus or minus. Now let's go look at the institution of marriage. Why do you come here? I come here to save this farm for them boys of yourn. No more, no less, mostly. I'd think that'd be your concern as well. Now, your wife takes out $100 every time she goes and sees her mom. You got 15 for gas, round trip. 199 twice in Happy Meals for you two boys, 109 for a big gulp refill hers. Two children's theater tickets at 350 per for the Saturday matinee, one senior citizen's ticket, none for your wife, by the way. Four all-you-can-eat Sunday buffets at Shawnee's and three Frosties for the ride back here on Sunday afternoon for a grand total of 7201 out of one Ben Franklin. Stuff costs money. What's that got to do with anything? That leaves her $27.99 in cash, David. Okay. File that figure. Credit card receipts for the last five years. They all here but June of 97. Why is that? Well, I reconstructed through cross-reference and come up with $156.60 out of a total of $212.58. Can you cipher in your hand, David? That's $55.98 divided by 2 equals $27.99 unaccounted for coincidence. I don't know what you're talking about. A motel room, son! $27.99, tax included, all day Saturday, every other week! Are you saying my wife is cheating on me? I'm saying she's hiding something, Dave. Except for that one slip up in June of 98, it's all been cash. Slip up? What slip up? You're guessing at half this shit. Well, there's always 4.5% margin of error, plus or minus. However, nobody's perfect. What's that? Receipt from Roscoe Drugs on 12-24-97. Right there in between a can of white rain hairspray and four pieces of bazooka bubble gum is the purchase of one tube of Lucette spermicide. Spermicide? And you had a vasectomy in April of 97, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, she didn't want to have no more kids. With you or anybody else, I'm afraid. She bought this on Christmas Eve. I can appreciate the irony. Hey, y'all, I got your beer. 
Let's have baby R. David talk financial planning. Now that's cold beer. We didn't bring the whole case. Can we go get it? Much obliged. Your brother trustworthy? With my life. Why? I'd like to look at his numbers, but I'll take your word for it. Now, even with the insurance from the fires, considering fluctuating chicken and hog prices. What about my cows? Rustlers. You're still about 120,000 short. Two legs and one arm should put you over the top, though. I know a boy does pretty good work. Make sure you won't bleed to death before the ambulance gets here. You left to right handed. Right. I heard old Johnny Vance. He only lost one arm. That's confidential, son, besides them with different numbers. I don't give a shit. I can't farm without my legs. I see your point. Let's look at your last option then. And to me, the most logical. You and your wife got a paid up life insurance policy. If either one of you dies from accidental causes. I don't hear this. Your call. Go ahead. She's a fornicatress, David. It's doubtful that's gonna change. Plus, I figured the odds at three to five that she'll leave here one day with them boys yawning and never come back. That's if you keep the farm and all your lambs. How much? You took out the policy, David. Yeah, I guess I did. And you know it's enough to get this farm back from the bank free and clear with enough left over to fix up the old home plate. For your boys, David. You smoke reef? Been a while. Let's burn a couple of numbers. It'll clear out your head. Hey, that's murder, David. She's cheating on me, Tommy. She's probably gonna leave me anyway. Well, what's the odds? Three to five. See? That's as good as done. Oh, look, hey, there's got to be another option. Yeah. Burn down the farm and turn me into a stump. Well, hell, I'll put you on the track every morning, no problem. Why don't be one have to drag him behind a mule? Hey, how, how would somebody do it? David, hey, hey, listen to me. Hey, now. I said, how would somebody do it? David, you are drunk. Shh, you are Shut drunk. up. I'm just thinking out loud. Insecticide works pretty fair. Do it outdoors, though. She'll be twitchy and whatnot. David, David, you listen to me. Now, Kathy's a mom of them boys. That's your high school sweetheart. You, you know what? You just stay here. Stay right here. Hey, mister, mister, come here. Hey, look, I want to talk to you. I ask you to come out here and I ask you to help us out with this situation. What the hell's going on here? Hey, there might be another option. That right there, that's a handwritten journal of the old Dells. Passed down from father to son. It's all the way back to when my great great granddaddy owned a thousand acres to the measly 150 that I got now. I'm not following you, son. It's a tragedy. Uh huh. Well, somebody could turn this into a book or a movie or something. A movie about the old Dells. Well, why not? Billy Bob Thornton done it. Well, I don't think it was his true life story, David. You said that he's the real deal. He's a good old boy. 
just like us. And well, if he can do it, why can't we? Where's this Billy Bob supposed to be from? Uh, Arkansas, I think. Where was President Clinton from? Arkansas. Coincidence. Stay with me now. How many people around here you know named Billy Bob? Yeah, none. Or even the ubiquitous Bubba. I don't know about him, but there's that Bubba on In the Heat of the Night reruns. Exactly my point. Bubba, Gomer, Goober, Cletus, Enos, Cooter, Jethro, Ellie Mae, Billy Bob? Don't insult my intelligence. You saying Billy Bob ain't a real person? I ain't gonna let no real good old boys in the movie picture been his son. Who risky for him? They? Who's they? Who ain't? Mister, you done double taught me for the last time. I... Better put on some coffee, boys. I'll take something a little sweet if you got it. Saved the Odell brothers from sloppy bookkeeping and questionable farming practices. I come here to save a way of life. See, they're all in it together. Who is? Hollywood, Wall Street, Boston Market. Would that be Cap? Caffeinated. I need the wallet. You'll know soon enough. It's brilliant, actually. What is? They're playing! One world, one culture, one corporation, whatever you want to call it. First, they, they take away the little man's ability to produce his own food by devising a system where he's got access to easy credit with easy terms. Once they get him hooked, then they change the rules. Suddenly, they want their money they wanted yesterday. So this little farmer works hard. Plants more crops, fans more hogs. But then, like magic, the price drops. Supply and demand, they say. He's offered 100 an acre, what cost him 200 to grow. The greater his yield, the further he goes into debt with them banking corporations till he's ground by. That's when a, a farming corporation comes in, takes this fella's land, leaving him with no choice but to go to town to work for some manufacturing corporation. Or retail. But they ain't done with him. Cause, say, boy, this farmer still has his his culture, and that scares him. His roots, based in independence, even rebelliousness, his countryness, if you will. So what do they do about that? Well, that's where the multimedia corporations step in. They begin to bombard their, their new company man with caricatures and stereotypes of his self. Gomer Powell, Dukes of Hazzard, Beverly Hillbillies, Hey Hall, so on and so forth, till finally he, he can't trust his own reality. He don't know what it is no more. He, he starts acting country instead of being country. Until one day he'll, 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 he'll be like a, like a, a, a Scotsman who, who puts on his kilt once a year to celebrate his Scottishness. Until, until finally. This man, this farmer, who once worked on the land and with the land can be controlled. 
So he won't question his purpose in making rivets or sitting in front of a computer screen from nine to five, five days a week for 40 years till he gets downside and dies. Oh, worse. Worse. Takes his severance pay and retires to Branson, Missouri. So how long has this conspiracy been going on? Long time. Now it's so pervasive. L.A. been infiltrated the Grand Ole Opry. You mean the Grand Ole Opry's in on it, too? You think they'd let old Hank Williams in Nashville, Tennessee today? Hell no. He's too country. Got better odds you a folk singer from Canada. So where do them people from that Boston market come in? Let's just say that one day your grandchildren will be eating cornbread that's sweet and drinking iced tea that ain't. And I think that's a Southern tradition. You see what they done, boys. What is ain't and what ain't is. They turned it all upside down and y'all didn't even notice. Is there any way to stop them? Maybe. We can save one little farm at a time. No matter the cost, boys. No matter the cost. He said you'd know what to do. How do you know that David killed himself and not Kathy? Uh, he's always a 4.5% margin of error, plus or minus. Either way, the farmer's safe. Wait a second. You telling me you wasn't 100% sure? Your brother didn't have a pot to piss in, yet he still give money to his church, Boy Scouts, even the Lottie Moon Missionary Fund. All the numbers indicated he's a decent man, just a piss poor farmer. When he realized he'd failed as a husband, too, them boys was all he had left. And this was the only option made sense to save the farm for him. Murdering their mama just didn't add up. Well, how'd David know that Aunt Kathy wouldn't take his money and run off that fella she was having an affair with? Oh, she's not the beneficiary, Tommy. You are. What? David knew you'd do whatever it took to save the farm, and that you was forward-thinking enough to succeed. He knew a lot more than he let on. 
Right here's good. I love her, you know. She loves me too. You just be good to them boys. I will. By God, I will. First thing y'all do is zero out the dead on the farm. What about his truck? Say it again. It's kind of on his last leg. I was thinking maybe I could get me a new truck. And you listen to me, son. You listen good. You'll drive that truck till she falls off her wheels. Then you go to town and get you another used one. Pay cash. No extended cab, no air conditioner, no CD player. When the time is right, you'll read this diary to them boys. Let them know where they come from, and that'll let them know where they're going. You will not encourage them to leave this land to seek a better life. You will convince them this is the better life. If you do that, one day at a time, them boys will learn to love you like you're their own daddy. But if you don't, I'll be back here with some numbers. Make your head spin. That'll be twenty-seven ninety-nine. What for? Gas and mileage. $27.99? Just a coincidence. Where are you off to now? Alabama. Pray for me. Hey, look, you, you was making some of that stuff up, weren't you? Numbers and facts always fudged here and there. It's called accounting. Well, like that stuff about Billy Bob, I mean, you, he's a real deal, eh? Maybe he's one of the lucky ones. So, then, then there ain't this big conspiracy really going on, is there? If a man builds a machine, and that machine conspires with another machine built by another man. Are those men conspiring? 